Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll get a chance to see Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings as they take on the third-year man, Mitchell Trubisky, and the NFC North champion, Chicago Bears. With that, let's get out to venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Standing by with the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to one of our favorite spots, venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. Just a short time ago, this crowd loud enough to shake the foundations of this nearly century-old building. They are ready for football indeed in Chicago as their guys get set to do battle with the Minnesota Vikings. From up top, Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you. And Charles, an NFC North matchup here, the so-called black and blue division. Out of baby, show that A. <laughs> it's going to be a battle in 2019 as well. Who do you like out of this division? Well, Chicago is a defending champion, and they play defense as well as anyone in the league, so you have to like their chances to repeat. Minnesota thought they were going to run the division, had a rough year. That's not normal Vikings football. They'll get back into the fray. Green Bay had such an underwhelming season last year they change coaches but they still have number 12 throwing the football and Detroit they're on a crusade to eliminate bad football and get back to being the Lions that roar the children will grow and it's the final weekend of summer but we've got the NFL and we're underway on EA Sports this fielded at the two and a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Quarterback Mitchell Trubisky leading out the Chicago Bears. Former number two overall pick out of Carolina. Big improvements in year two for Trubisky. Touchdown spiked from 7 to 24. Yards per game went up by almost 50. And, of course, most importantly, the Bears went from five wins to 12 and an NFC North title. So first and 10 now from the 30. You better bring it. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. The Vikings after him and they get there for the sack. Anthony Barr comes rumbling in for the sack. And so much for that great field position to start the game. Now they're way behind the sticks. Can't wait to see what their second down call is going to look like now. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Now it's Trubisky. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And Charles, now we get our first look at this offense. And one guy you have to look at in particular is Kyle Long. Can play guard or tackle with a nice degree of nastiness. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Hits his target. It's Taylor Gabriel. And the ball is knocked out. And the Vikings pick up the football. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. Possession going back over to Minnesota here. And CD, earlier we talked about Kirk Cousins, and in week two, him only being 14 of 32 throwing the football. 
And with that Week 2 loss against Green Bay, they're now 1-1. One one. Now, there was at least a sign of fight in Week 2 because they got down 21 to nothing early in that game. Yeah, they got it back to 21-16 and had opportunities, just couldn't get over the hump. 38 runs, 10 passes in Week 1. That makes their head coach, Mike Zimmer, very happy. He wants to run the ball at all costs. But in the NFL, the you'll have to balance that out. And they did that against Green Bay, just not effectively. Now they get to host Oakland next week. Then they go to Chicago for a very important divisional game. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Connecting with Burton here over the middle. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Check, check, watch 54, watch 54. Hey, pick it up, Jesus. Third and two, now Trubisky. And that is incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. Here comes Kirk Cousins and the rest of the Minnesota Vikings offense. This crew won and won through two weeks of the NFL season. But you look at Kirk's numbers, they're, they're kind of strange through two weeks. No need to panic because the Vikings are one and one, but not typical Kirk Cousins numbers. No, I would agree with that. Now, in the first game against Atlanta, he didn't have to throw the football. They ran it effectively, so he only threw it 10 times. But at Green Bay, 14 of 32. 14 of 32. And remember last year, he was a 70% thrower. The biggest problem for him and the Vikings, big games. He was brought in to win them. That didn't happen at Green Bay in week two. To throw, Cousins. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Here's Dalvin Cook, third year back from Florida State. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On the ground, it's Cook. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. It's probably a pretty good sign here on the opening drive of your guys from the secondary are coming up and spilling things in the backfield. How about the adrenaline and aggressiveness that led his eyes to the backfield? to run up there and make that tackle, setting a tone early for his defense. The 
On second down, Cook. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't Only matter anymore down. how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Cook following the penalty. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. And there to make the tackle, Khalil Mack. Let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. And running back Dalvin Cook was drafted in 2017 to be the lead runner for the Vikings, and he should love what they're putting in for him in 2019. This is a run-first, run-heavy offense as dictated by their head coach. Dalvin Cook should get more than enough carries to threaten 1,000 yards rushing this season. On second down. It's Cook, and down to the 44, five yards that time. And here are the Chicago defensive starters. Ha Ha Clinton Dix attracted a lot of attention when he was about to enter the NFL for his ability to play the football in the air. He's actually shown that he can tackle pretty well in the league, too. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on to punt. Tariq Cohen is deep for the Bears. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? But that definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Chicago Bears offense taking the field again here. I, I got to tell you, week two, I'm from Indiana, so I have a lot of Bears fans in my timeline on social media. <laughs> and it was so interesting to track during the game because they were so depressed. And then they saved that late with a 53-yard game-winning field goal. Not the best performance, but it did get them Charles to one and one. Yeah, and the roughing the passer call that set up the game-winning field goal, I think there were two on the drive. Both of them, let's term them questionable. The Bears benefited from that. But for a franchise, for a fan base, to have Eddie Pinero make that 53-yard field goal at the gun after the way their season ended last year with field goal kicking, that's got to be a big sigh of relief for all concerned that like the blue and orange. Give him two yards on that play, and it's a second down. Less than a minute to go here in a scoreless first quarter to this point. Throwing again on second down. Trubisky. That's complete right side to Gabriel. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. 27 yards there, a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Trubisky now off the bootleg. That's complete to the Memphis man, Anthony Miller. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 
Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Territory now. They'll come up first and 10 at the 43. Again, it's Trubisky to Gabriel, middle of the field. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25 yard line. Another 18 yard gain. They had 18 on the previous snap as well. We're scoreless after one. Back in Chicago, ready for the second quarter. It's the Bears in possession as they've got it with a first and ten. Trubisky will come up here first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. The former Gamecock here, this is Mike Davis. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Well, that one was over before it could get rolling. How about the D just knifing into the backfield and shutting that one down? Second and 14, Trubisky, and his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time, and now it's third down. It's now third down and 14. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, Trubisky, out to his left. And an alley to run. And avoids the contact by sliding. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. These type of plays are backbreakers for a defense. They thought they had him hemmed in, thought they were going to get him on the ground with the pass rush, but were unable to do so. He gets away, picks up a big first down, and sets up first and goal inside the 10. A first trip to the red zone for the Bears. This is first and goal from about the eight. Now Trubisky. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. There for the sack, Everson Griffin. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Trubisky will throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. Now we've got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in that huddle, partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now it's Trubisky. A coverage sack took too long to get rid of it. Everson Griffin picks up his second sack of the afternoon. 
Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility, the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. Now for the field goal try, here's Eddie Pinheiro. This will be a 37-yard attempt. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded at the two. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. This one a little slow to get cooking, just a 3-0 scoreline as they begin with a first and 10. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. They start the drive with Cook. He'll have a first down past the 40, and he'll get this all the way up to the 42-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. They go play action. Cousins. Let's it fly for Thielen. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll take this to the 47, but no further as they get him down well short of the line to gain. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Mitchell Trubisky on his way out, the subject of our player's spotlight. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way 
to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Uh, he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. On second down, Montgomery. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Second quarter, two minutes remain. Three nothing, our score. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need to, give the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. Cousins now to throw on first down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, and that'll bring up second down. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. And he'll go down. And the Bears get there for the sack. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And he's not going to get anywhere close to the marker as he'll stop him well short of the yellow line. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And the Bears take over. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's only had a couple of carries. I mean, when you've got a horse like this, second quarter, got to start to ride that horse a little more, don't you? You can't just neglect him. He's got to touch it and often in order to get maximum out of him. Typically, these types of backs, it's the accumulation of carries, and that's when you see the damage as the game goes on. Yeah, let's see. They're going to try to get him into the flow, we would assume here. 
Looking to throw, Trubisky on first down. Rolling to his right. He'll have a first down past the 40. And he'll take it to the 43-yard line. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now Trubisky to throw, throwing the out route incomplete. It's Miller. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Throwing here, Trubisky. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. The sack by big number 98, Linval Joseph. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Here's Trubisky to throw. Completes it to the tight end, Burton. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. That was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The Bears on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 14. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. So we will not go into the lockers tied. We do have a leader in the clubhouse, so to speak. Yeah, it's only three points. Doesn't seem like much, but it looms big the way that they got it done right before the half ended. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. The results for them so far, not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet, trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice, and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Final play of the half, Cousins. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So we've reached halftime. All we have to show for the first half, a lone field goal. 3-0 our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach.
Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. These offenses seemingly still back at the hotel for the first half. 3-0 our score as the second half gets underway. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. Yeah, they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And maybe time for this offense to really hit the reset button. They were shut out in the first half, but still, they're right in this game. They certainly are. What I like about it is that you actually continue to play. You know, you just find a way to make a few plays yourself, and you noted it. Right there on the border in this game, they're not that far off. Just got to find a play or two, and they could be very happy at that point. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Cousins the thrower. And Cook has it, left side. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. The last completion actually lost a yard, so now they'll need to convert on third down. From the gun, here's Cousins. And that is incomplete. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. On the return is Cohen. Call that 49 yards on the punt. They do get seven back on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their yeah. offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now it's Trubisky. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And they'll take him down at the 31 yard line. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays. But I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football. In that situation, that's almost a tendency breaker. Yeah. 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Trubisky. They'll roll him out right. He's got a first down and then some at midfield. A good pickup, 17 yards and a bare first down. But well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice game. Trubisky now, 9 of 15, throwing the ball, 60%, and it's first and 10. Montgomery. Well, it springs free, Montgomery loses it, and the Vikings pick up the football. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only going to tip it, I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations, big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 31-yard line. <laughs> Trying to fire up that running game with Dalvin Cook. Kyle Fuller, the one to make the tackle. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Cousins. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. To throw is Cousins. And that is incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover. But doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah. And they had all that momentum after getting the football. And now zapped right back in the other direction. Here's Britton Colquitt now. As he's on for the fifth time here today. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And yeah, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because <laughs> they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at the 20. From the gun, it's Trubisky. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had the fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it. But people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. That catch good for five. It's third down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because 
He really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. And the hook up here to Allen Robinson. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. On the carry, it's Montgomery. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And that's the big fellas MO right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Out left to Shaheen. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations. But a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route... Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Trubisky now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. A play fake to Montgomery, now Trubisky. This one out left to the tight end, Burton. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. And that's when it's fun to play defense, when you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play. That's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. From the gun, a give to Davis. And once again, he'll get possibly back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. The tackle made there by Linval Joseph. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. He'll look to throw, and that will be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Oh. 
And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well, but he got enough on it to put it through. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Uh, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the Let's 25. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. I tell you what, it's kind of hard to imagine. They have not scored a single point. And yet they're in this position, a touchdown drive here, and they're in the lead. Normally when you have zero on your side of the ledger on the scoreboard, you're a little bit discouraged. But when they look over and see their opponents, they don't see a number that's way out there. They don't see a number they can't attain. In fact, they can get it right here on this drive and potentially take the lead. Kirk Cousins last year started all 16 games but only led the Vikes to just one fourth quarter comeback like he's trying to do here. A first down throw for Cousins. Over the middle here to Rudolph. That throw good for four. It's second down. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. I tell you, they didn't give it to him much for the first three quarters, but when they have, he's been efficient. Maybe they ride him more here down the stretch. Yeah, I'm not sure it was actually in the game plan for him to have as few carries as he has, but it might play out really well for them now. As you noted, if they want to ride him down the stretch, he should have fresh legs. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. Now Cousins, and complete right side to Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Even though this offense doesn't have a single point to its name, they're not totally out of this game yet. A touchdown here, they could be in business. And how about that last play? Now they've got momentum going, so you know I'm a big advocate. Get back on the line of scrimmage. Throw another play at them while you've got them rocked on their heels. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Johnson the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. That's a gain of four as we slip inside of four minutes left in regulation. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, Cousins. Open man is stealing his complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 29-yard line. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Cousins now... Just 7 of 15 so far, but he's got a first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags, and I believe this is going to be a first down. 
The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Now it's first and 10, a big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kyle Ford. And he'll return it to the 24 yard line. Johnson was the intended receiver. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners who've had the receivers on lockdown. Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Now listen, it's a team game, we know that, but where would these guys be right now, Charles, without their defense? So they take over here following the turnover. Defense did it again, but on offense, they have to feel like, hey, we need to do something. You're exactly right, and you just mentioned that the defense did it again. They bailed them out on a number of occasions in this contest. It's time for them to repay the defense at the least. Stop. Keep the ball for a while. Give those guys a break so they can catch their breath. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 24. Now it's Trubisky. That's complete right side to Gabriel. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Push him back. Twelve yards there and a first down. Probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. We're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Shit, shit. Shit, no, no. Out of the shotgun, they'll run with Davis. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On second down now, it's Montgomery. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Trubisky. He gets this complete to Shaheen, the tight end. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, a clear running situation. Trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. Throwing now is Trubisky. Over the middle, the tight end Shaheen with it. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Ready? 
Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. Here's Trubisky. To the right side, complete to Miller. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They run Montgomery, and they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats, but really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. And Trubisky down to a knee, and that is all she wrote. It's a loss of a yard, bringing up third and 12. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And not all W's are created equal, CD. And this one came in shutout fashion. Well, their offense certainly didn't need to do anything, right? They could take the day off, and they did. But the defense, they carried them in a big way. Yeah, look, the offense obviously stuffed to work on, but they did enough, and the defense carried the load. But well, you know what they say, it's always fun to work on things if it didn't go well in your game with a victory in your pocket. And that's what they've got going forward. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.